Great. Uh, so again, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform, the European Commission's platform for school education in Europe. My name is Nikki and I will be your host for today. Just some practical information before we officially start. The webinar is being recorded and the recording might be used for dissemination purposes. Also, if you have questions, feel free to post them in the chat. The focus for today's webinar is how to become an e-tweening school, students as agents of change. We will explore this topic by following the e-tweening journey of two Romanian educators. Plus, we will be able to hear directly from their students on how they fostered an environment for students to take the lead in their school and external community. For the first part, it's my pleasure to invite on the virtual stage Nicoletta Militaru and Adriana Lefter. Nicoletta and Adriana are both e-twinning ambassadors. Nicoletta has been an English teacher for 20 years, while Adriana is a primary school teacher and headmaster of school Elena Duamna. Without further ado, I will pass the floor on to Nicoletta and Adriana. Hello, hello everyone. I'm very happy to be today with you. Um, thank you, Nikki, for the invitation and thank you to all the participants that are today with us. Uh, I will start to share. So our topic is how to become an e-twinning school student as agents of change. I told you my name is Adriana Lefter. I'm an e-twinning and Erasmus ambassador. And um, I'm from Tecuc. Tecuc is a small city in the east part of Romania. And this is my school, uh, the place where I spent a lot of time and um, my heart uh, is uh, uh, almost there all day. And uh, I'm um, very involved in all the activities and I start with the tweening in 2010. So uh, we developed a lot of activities and projects in this time and um, um, also, we are a twinning school for the third time. We started in 2018, after in 2020, and in this year, 2023, we receive again the label of a twinning school. So we are very happy to share with you the information about the twinning school. Nikki, you, did you see my presentation? Everything is okay? Yes, we yes. were able to see. Thank you. So now I want to ask you, um, maybe you will write in chat, one word about what do you think it is an e-twinning school? Uh, keyword for a twinning school, for example, if you want to share with us, just a word. Share inclusion projects, model for the other school motivation, very interesting words. Innovation, multicultural collaboration. Yes, maybe the most important word for us today is collaboration. Thank you for these words uh, because now I will go on with the um, with the presentation. And yes, this was the words we are thinking about when we are talking about an e-twinning school. Because yes, the words you told before, collaboration, communication, common school vision, are very important for an e-twinning school. And e-twinning is about togetherness. Together, let's reach the new high. Yes, an e-twinning school uh, is sharing good examples with the other schools. E-twinning schools uh, sh mm, promote sharing is caring. I think it is very important this uh, to share what you know for the other school 
and to inspire the other to do the same. Uh, collaboration between teachers. Collaboration between teachers from our school with other schools. Collaboration between teachers and parents, students and parents, our school and our local community, and the most important, collaboration with students. Because students are the angel agents of change. And here is a list with uh, some schools from our district. We are eight schools from our district Galatz that we uh, receive the um, at winning um, school label. And now we are talking about what mean about the students as agents of change. It's mean to empower students to actively improve the experience for themselves and for their peers through a project based approach. And we have to keep in stay in touch with students and to encourage them to apply for project if they are older or, or if not to participate and to set up and to give up idea about the new projects. I think it is very important for students uh, to take a leading role. Uh, my students, our students from our school um, are small. We have students from six to 14 years. Uh, the most of them uh, are in primary school. The um, biggest number of students are from primary school. So it is very important for the smallest one to give them a leading role and also to deliver effective and measurable change. If they see that if their action um, made a change, it is very important for the small one. They are very happy to see if their ideas are good and if it changed something. It is very important also to become part of the community of sharing practice. I will show you after how our students are promoting a twinning to parents, to other teachers, to other a twinier, uh, to other uh, students from our community uh, in small activities and also in big, big activities from our community. Our community tech coach is our city, or if not, to our district activities. And also students are allies in making necessary changes, encourages them to think and to be more active. And also I will share with you here some activities we, uh, that our students develop in green, um, to develop green competencies. So, I will start to present you some activities uh, from a twinning and also Erasmus activities, uh, Erasmus project, because all our Erasmus project was also developed on a twinning platform. Uh, teachers and pupils collaborate a lot in planning activities. Here uh, you see an activities from an a twinning project, the very hungry bookworm, that receive also the first prize in Romania for innovation. And uh, we have invited in one activity, the book writer uh, from Stick and Stone, uh, Beth Ferry, and all the activities that we made it online for sure, it was organized by students. Students uh, put um, discuss with the book writer, um, about what means to write a book, uh, how uh, she choose the characters, and a lot of other questions. But they think about this invitation. And we are very happy to receive the, the answer from Beth Ferry. She agreed to uh, stay with us in, um, in a webinar. And our students create question, uh, a big, big discussion. We stayed two hours. And we let them to feel free to, to um, ask her about um, what mean um, book writer activity. And 
in the second part, uh, I present you how we can involve students in decision making of school issues. Here uh, we have an um, anti bullying club. You know, because the bullying now it is a topic that we are talking a lot in our days. So uh, in our school, we decided to create an anti bullying club. With students, we are two teachers in the coordinating of this club, but the students take the um, very active role in making activities. Uh, every day during the breaks, they are staying on the corridors, they are going outside in the schoolyard and they are discussing with the small one. You see that here is the older one from our school, 13 and 14 years, and they are very, very involved in these activities because now, now they can stay um, uh, in our school during the breaks and they can take decisions. If the situation is not from their competences, they will ask the teachers to uh, to come. But if not, they are discussing with the smaller one. Uh, um, they are telling them that is not correct uh, some um, action, but we let them to decide and to uh, um, go on with this project. We have two years since we start with this club and we are very happy that we give them this opportunity to, um, to, to take action. Um, here, I told you that we, we encourage students to present their activities from Etwining and Erasmus in an open event in school. Um, now, uh, in, this, in, in the first photo, it is uh, the Erasmus day. I told you Erasmus and Etwining for us uh, are uh, very uh, our brothers, so um, all the activities from Erasmus for us is it winning the same, and uh, we organize for Erasmus days a big big activities in our schoolyard. We have almost 500 students. Uh, think about that. Uh, for each student comes um, one or two adults. So we was a lot in that day into the schoolyard, and we promote our project and our activities. And in the second photo, it was an, a twinning uh, project um, about uh, ancient Egypt. Uh, one class, my class, um, we opened an uh, Egyptian museum in our class because we created masks, uh, sarcophags, and a lot of other um, um, objects uh, inspired from the um, Egyp uh, Egyptian um, um, period and we invited all the other students in our museum. So now we give them the opportunity to my I give the opportunity to my students to present in this uh, open event in our school what they have learned and what they have done into the project. And after these activities we using a twinning, we also encourage students to develop ICT tools uh, to develop uh, digital competencies using ICT tools. And here you see students using Lego, using uh, different prog programs on uh, computers, uh, because I think it is very, very important for our students to have digital competencies in our days. Uh, as I told you before, we encourage students to present. Here is the older one to present a twinning to parents. Here is uh, only to, to one class, parents from one class with their teacher, and they present all the activities they developed um, in one project to their parents. And in the second part, the activities from our twinning, we presented in a big, big competition that is um, called Made for Europe where we go with the products from a twinning and Erasmus project and we are very happy to have uh, good prizes and our students are very appreciated, not only our students, but our project and our results. So as I told you, it is very important 
to encourage students to use collaborative tools because at winning school mean collaboration, mean collaboration be between students from our school, between students from all the projects we are involved. And also one criteria from the twinning school is, is safety. It's very important to um, make students to understand how to use, to access, to filter, to evaluate, to create, to program and to share digital content and to take care to fake news. And also to develop uh, digital competencies, we have also a um, club of robotic where students are learning uh, to use 3D printer and to code, to use coding in activities. And because I told you before at the beginning that we let them to um, and we encourage them to um, develop projects by their own to coordinate and to be active, our school is very, very active in ecological uh, activities. You can see here a lot, a lot of activities. Here are some students from um, our community, our um, a group of students, they are coordinating the ecological activities and uh, they are very involved. They are coordination. They are coordinating uh, um, to collect select um, to collect the um, um, rubbish uh, uh, differently. Uh, they are promoting into the city using posters. Um, what mean to to keep the the earth clean? Uh, they are promoting to recycle to to um, have a creative recycle of um, um, the all the objects that we don't use. And we also have in our school the Green Friday when we are very very active. Uh, to to be clean in our school and in our surrounding of the school. And also we have uh, first day with vitamin. On first day, all our students are eating um, fruits and vegetables at school. Um, they are very happy to eat together. It is very important to eat fruit and uh, vegetables every day. But uh, with this campaign, every first day, uh, all the students um, are coming and they are eating together into the schoolyard on the corridors um, this fruit and they are very happy to do it together. And maybe one of the most important competencies in our days is STEM competencies uh, that we uh, try to promote and to develop uh, with our students in our twinning and in our Erasmus project. You can see here some um, idea of activities. Uh, the first one is the investigation of water. Uh, we go outside with students from the school uh, near the water. We take uh, water from lake and uh, we make the using the investigation sheets, um, worksheets, we um, uh, analyze if they are uh, if the water is polluted in the second part here in our schoolyard we investigate the biodiversity and also the insects uh, you see here the girl using um, uh, this object and is studying the insects um, in the girls they are investigating it is one part of the project with the uh, uh, ancient Egypt, where we are studying the mummification. Uh, it is also a STEM activities uh, using apples and using uh, salt, soda, uh, Epsom salt, uh, table salt. Uh, we put the, some pieces of apple. You see that before we uh, measure uh, the pieces of apple. We put it in uh, different quantities of salt of this. Um, we make we mix these um, uh, compositions and after one week we discovered that uh, which was the best option and we are thinking about how the um, uh, Egyptian 
um, they are using um, and they are making the mummification 2000 years ago. And um, in the last photo, you see here and also a STEM activities. Uh, it is a STEM and literacy activities. We read the story about um, white beer from North Pole and we are um, studying after uh, the adaptation of the animals into the North Pole and I discussed with students that the fat is protecting their body and uh, in this way they are able to live at that temperature and we have done this experiment. You see the girls that have one hand in uh, ice and the other hand in one bag. In that bag, I put fat of um, pork, pork fat. And um, in this way, students understand that that fat is protecting the body uh, of the animal of uh, that temperature. And they are in this way, they are adapted to live in that place in their places this was my idea for you hope you will get some inspiration and you find it here some idea to share with your colleagues or to use in your classes thank you very much Great, uh, thank you very much, uh, Adriana. I think that we can move on to the second portion with Nicoletta and a uh, nice, interesting thing. We have some students of Nicoletta's also joining us to give us a first-hand account of their experience. So I think that you will find it, find it interesting to hear directly from them. So Nicoletta, uh, I pass the floor on to you. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to check if my three wonderful ladies are online with me. I can see Adela and I would like to know if Andy and Anna are also here. I'm here. Uh, Anna. Hello, I... Andy. OK, there we go. Hello, Anna. All here. Thank you very Amazing. much. <laughs> so everybody is here. We can start our presentation. We can start sharing from our experience and from, um, I don't know, maybe giving you a good example for future uh, experiences. Um, okay, sorry, just a couple of minutes. Okay. So I was telling you, Let me know if you can see my presentation, please. Yes, we can. OK, thank you very much. Um, I can't see it here. So as my colleagues were telling you, my name is Nicoleta Militaru. I am also an e-twinning ambassador. I've been uh, on the twinning adventure since uh, 2012, which means that uh, I have grown a lot by taking part in a lot of projects and a lot of uh, development activities. What I liked the most was the fact that my students also joined me in this adventure and they took up the challenges of working uh, with us. In our school, we focus on developing different skills from the European framework because we have also wanted our students to be able to integrate themselves into communities with ease. So we mainly focused on developing their language skills both in their mother tongue as well as in other languages, not only English, we also wanted them to develop mathematical and science skills by making analysis and comparisons of different information they got in the project. We were also focused on developing digital competences as they are very important. And here I can tell you that they have been a useful resource in the pandemic period as betweeners uh, offered a lot of support to other members of our community. You will be hearing about it a little bit later today. 
We also wanted them to be able to make the difference between good and bad information. So we focused our projects on um, teaching them how to find information or correcting the information. We also focused on finding the right resources and quoting them in our material. Of course, we also focused on developing social skills as well as initiative, taking initiative from different perspectives. In our school, as an e twinning school, we decided to be involved in a lot of activities. So how do we actually do it? Every summer we try to organize workshops. And these workshops are focused on our students. As you know, when we start school in September, it's quite difficult to uh, handle a lot of tasks. Uh, they are involved in a lot of other activities. So sometimes we might need extra work in order to make our projects successful. We called our initiatives Be Active because we wanted them to be involved in the community, not only at the school level, but also at our small community level. So we had these wonderful summer workshops in which they learned about the digital tools they can use, in which they worked together in order to create different resources for their colleagues. Also, as an eTwinning ambassador, I focused my activity on organizing workshops for teachers. Being an eTwinning school means offering support. So I took up on this challenge and I offer support to all our Erasmus partners, for example, people who had to go to eTwinning to work on eTwinning in the Erasmus project, but they had no idea how to do it. So the fact that we are an eTwinning school gave them a lot of confidence. The fact that our students already knew how to work the eTwinning space also made them feel safe and they knew that they had someone to turn to whenever they had a question or they didn't know how to do, how to solve a situation. We chose to be very vocal about our activity. So we presented our projects in different local and national events. We took our e-twinning work and made it known. We wanted people to know that it's easy. No matter the age of your student, all you had to do was to get them involved. We demonstrated them what e-twinning opportunities are and how easy it can be for a school to achieve the title of an e-twinning school. Also, we understood that it's better when we work in a team. So we created partnerships with our uh, CCD Center, the Center for Teacher Development, and also partnerships with other high school and even a kindergarten in our town. They needed help to work with the twinning. They needed help in understanding how collaboration can be promoted in eTwinning projects. So as I was telling you, applying for an eTwinning school is not difficult if you follow some simple steps. You need to have your school registered with eTwinning for more than two years. You need to have teachers involved in the eTwinning space. You need to have them involved in projects, in uh, professional development activities or any other type of e-training activities that you may find on the platform. And also, you need to have national quality labor, at least one for one of the projects that you have in your school. Once these three aspects are met, all the members of school of the school will get the email in which they are invited to fill in the application form. What you need to understand is that the application form includes an important criteria, and that is having your students be part of the entire process. And with me today, 
I have three of them. I have Adela, who has been working with us for a long time. I also have Andrea and Anastasia. Hello. Okay, each and every one of them has a different responsibility within it winning, and they will be sharing with you now from their own experience, showing you how we, as teachers, chose to empower our students in it winning. Girls, if you are ready. Students as agents of change. Adela, I would like you to start the presentation first, if it's possible. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay. That's I'm here today, and uh, I'm glad that I can share my experience with you. So, as you can see, uh, we participated in the county competition called Made for Europe, where me and my colleague Andrea presented our products. I presented the twin space for our project, Act for Environment, which is an, was an example for the teachers and the students that were there. And in the end, we were proud to say that we were going to beat the next challenge of the following stage. So from 25 to 29 April 2023, we participated in the national phase of the contest, which took place in Bistrica. It was really important for us because we had the chance to represent our school with our products, which were again an example of good practice, but this time for students and teachers from the whole country. We also had a stand where people could play two of our digital games in physical format, and if they won, they would receive a gift from us like uh, pens, stickers with the Erasmus and the Twinning logo, or lollipops. The gifts were given to them anyway, they just had to be active in our games. And uh, because I talked about challenges, another interesting one that I had to pass during the Erasmus project was talking about my experience with other students from my high school because of the three events that happen to be on the same day, which are the Erasmus Day, Europe Day and Within Day, uh, we decided to give a presentation of our projects. This was an interesting request for me because I love to share my experiences with, with others. You never know who needs to have an example in front of them so they can take action on their own emotions because doing everything out of their comfort zone seems scary and impossible. And if there's a thing that I learned from all my experiences during the Erasmus project is that without communication and team working, we cannot change the world, the mindset of people or the smiles. So that is why for me, all these activities were so important because without them and without the amazing team that I have been working with, uh, we could not make people aware of the power of united hearts and minds. Thank you. If you could share with all the people invited in this webinar, one most important thing that you gained from this experience in it winning, what would you say that is? What's oh. the biggest thing you've learned? The most, the, the, mo the most treasured one? Well, from this type of projects, we all learn like, new things. Uh, but right now, I don't want to talk about things that uh, we can learn, like information. I gained confidence and I gained so much. I felt so, I felt part of a family in this project and it's so important to be part of to feel like home so because i felt like home i gave i thought that i could do everything and anything i want and this was really important for me that's why i can be here and talk to you right now because two years ago i could not do that so <laughs> i gained so much self aware and i'm so glad that uh, it happened during this project and how does it feel to be part of national competitions in which you share about it winning? How did you feel being there in that national competition about it? Well, at first it felt 
a little scary because it's a new place. As I talked, being out of your comfort zone is never easy. It's actually the hardest thing to do. But because I had uh, I had people next to me to help me, I was never alone. So everything seemed possible. And everything is possible because <laughs> we base our work on uh, collaboration and supporting one another and uh, otherwise there's no success thank you very much adela wonderful girl who understood the e twinning and erasmus mission at the same time uh, i'm going to pass the floor now to andrea andy who will share her experience in e twinning projects european activities and many others Andy, the floor is yours. Hello. So today I'm going to talk about um, the stuff I was involved in and that I uh, still currently do. For example, uh, our uh, social media pages. We wanted our projects to be at an easy reach for everyone, which led us students to creating and managing pages for them. As you can see, we have two Instagram pages, one dedicated to our Erasmus and one for our training and of course, a Facebook page. We use those platforms to disseminate our local, regional and national activities and also mobilities. There are posts dedicated to those mobilities written by our students that went in different countries where they talked, uh, where they talk about their experience in the in uh, Erasmus mobility and the new things they have learned and also skills they developed. Uh, next up, uh, I'm gonna talk about our visit to Alexandria Kuzate Technological High School where we talked about what it's like to be involved in an e-twinning and Erasmus project. At first, they were quite insecure and they didn't know what an e-twinning project is uh, because they have never been on the platform. So we decided to meet and to explain the platform and demonstrate uh, different tools. The students then walked, welcomed in the idea and um, they quite very like they very much fell in love with the idea so they became partners with us in our e-training project be active uh we now hold all sorts of activities together it's truly wonderful to work with such involved people and it's it really shows how open teenagers are to learning new skills to be able to work and at such a to, hmm? oh. Continue. to be able to work at such a community level really shows that students and teachers want to achieve more than what school gives us. What Since... I observed, uh, I wanted to interrupt Andy a little bit because she's been a terrific ambassador. What I observed <laughs> when we visited the school was the fact that when I got this as a teacher, Everybody was looking at me like, oh, come, oh, another teacher coming to talk us about, to, to, to speak about projects, to try to convince us. And then when I had student with me, a student being in front of them, uh, answering their questions, telling them, well, it's not difficult, just give it a try. Everything that's new comes with a little bit of challenge, but it's not impossible. So when they had... Uh, the students in front of them, they feel more secure, as Andy was saying. So uh, yeah. students change students. It's easier like that. Of course, of course. It's, uh, it's more welcoming to see another student in front of you and you, you just get a different vibe from them. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about uh, peer learning and digital tools. Uh, why I chose peer, uh, peer learning is because I really like to teach other people all 
sorts of new stuff that I also uh, learned along the way. As we all know, one of the most difficult times was the pandemic, which challenged both teachers and students. Uh, but thankfully, <laughs> e-tweeners came and offered their support and, teach and teachers encouraged them to demonstrate different tools. Uh, of course, the best learners are students, kids my age that want to elevate themselves beyond what they are. Uh, with the experience I gained from e training projects, I can teach young people how to use different learning tools such as Padlet, Mentimeter, Digipad, Linois, Wordwall, as you can also see from the uh, pictures. Uh, through this, I show them that learning can be fun and it doesn't have to always involve the textbook. Uh, learning can happen uh, for example, in Padlets, where uh, there's um, a subject that people debate on, and you can also learn from that because you can see other other people uh, people's opinions and de um, maybe like change your view on that said subject. Uh, because I've also been involved into Erasmus Mobilities, I gained a lot of skills from public speaking to being to even being able to navigate a new city. I can proudly say that I've taught a handful of people how to be more mature and calculated in the decisions they take. Thank you. And also, also being able to handle uh, students, uh, all three girls that you see here today, Adela, Anastasia, and Andy, <laughs> were team leaders in Erasmus Mobilities. They are team leaders in their e twinning work, which means that if we as teachers choose to invest some time, energy, uh, to show them love and support, students can blossom, okay? And you, if you find these students in your schools, please don't let them go, okay? Don't let them waste their beauty, their intelligence, and their creativity. The next student I invited to represent students as agents of change, let's say, is Anastasia. And uh, I will pass the floor to you right now, Anna. Yes, thank you I'm very much. Ready. Yes, I am ready. Welcome, my dear. Okay. So, hi, everybody. My name is Anastasia Greco, and I want to talk about the huge impact that the Erasmus Plus and the twinning projects had on our school, and not only uh, on the participant students, but truly to the whole school community, because, because it really did move all of us. So first of all, I want to start uh, with saying that I have the honor and also the huge responsibility of being the president of the student council in our school. And the biggest challenge that I had to face was finding common points of interest between our students because they have different perspectives. And um, it was really hard for me to find one activity that could unite all of our students together from our school. So I was starting to feel really hopeless. But then I asked myself, what inspires me? So maybe this way I can inspire others. And the first thing that came to my mind was the Eat Winning project and the Erasmus Plus project that I had the opportunity to be in. So. This inspired me, like I said, and I created this way um, the event called Around Europe that will take place in the alternative school week from our school. And uh, to tell you a few words about this special event for us, it is basically a presentation where every single class had to represent a country and represent that country's culture using their creativity they had total freedom and some ideas they could do were like doing a traditional dance uh singing the, the national anthem talking in that specific language like i said that had, they had total freedom and the biggest surprise was that was that every single one of them wanted to be a part of it so 
it was very, very beautiful that we had this great collaboration between the school council and the twinning project. Actually, the second point that I want to focus on is collaboration, because this project was also involved in the e twinning project Be Active. And I want to tell you a few words about it. So first of all, uh, this also promotes European values. So it was a perfect fit for my idea of the project. Um, this year, there were two classes involved and also we had partner countries such as Spain, Turkey, and uh, even Poland. And um, this project is in a constant evolution because next year it will even become an optional course for the uh, 11th grade philology class. So, um, I mean, this was because students were really amazed by it and they wanted more and more. So now, like I said, we are in a constant evolution. And um, also I mentioned collaboration. And I want to tell you that the students involved in the Be Active project actually even helped us in the Erasmus Plus mobility that took place in Romania um, with the Be Active challenges. So we had a lot of fun in the Be Active challenges following a route in the park. And um, we had challenges invol involving our thinking like puzzles and um, crosswords and we had challenges involving our physical condition like hula hoops and jumping in one leg the point is we had a lot of fun working together and we thank very much the students from the active that were really really involved and we created this nice project so the conclusion for me is everything is great when we work together thank you very much we wanted to show you that starting from them being able to choose to participate in different competitions like made for europe as adriana was also mentioning in her talk and uh, as adela also mentioned being able to disseminate your work in the entire school to change people's perceptions about it winning to show them that it's not difficult to work and Andy, taking care of the social media and handling all these channels of communication, handling teachers who find it difficult to work on Instagram, but easier to work on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Having Anna being the voice of uh, the students in a school. You see, you can find students in every department in your school. Uh, I had this luck. Uh, but it took me some time, okay? So I hope our presentation today um, gives you that piece of time in which you no longer waste time looking, but you already know that it's possible, you know? You know, you've seen an example of people who can do it. Is it difficult? Yes, it is. But it's also beautiful, challenging, interesting, rewarding. So you should just give it a try. One of the teachers here was asking about how they can involve their uh, teachers more. And again, um, being able to talk to them, to show them examples of your practice, our school being an e-twinning school also organized courses in partnership with the Center for Teachers Development, as I was telling you. We've been organizing courses for three years already, and we don't want to stop because we do have the support of the local community. So we took all the beginners and we showed them how uh, they can set up their e-twinning projects. We took them with us in partnerships. Personally, I took all the teachers in my school who wanted to work and I was like, come on, join one of my projects and you will see that it's not difficult. So if you really need, if you really want to have people involved, create your teams, take them on board, okay? And always give them support, always have a smile on your face, or always have a piece of advice ready for them. We have tried this in our community. We have tried with primary school teachers in our school. We are a very big school. And we've also tried with kindergarten. And it's possible 
if you understand that you need to be there for these people for at least like one year to give them wings to fly, as I was telling you at the beginning of my presentation. Now, uh, for us, it's easy, as people say, because we are in a high school, students are older and uh, they come up with new things. So we are the lucky ones from this point of view. They are the ones, the students um, also manage our social media. It's not managed by teachers. We only supervise, okay? We make sure that the information is correct, that the photos um obey the gdpr rules so we are there in the shadow making sure everything uh goes well and um i want to add that i put the links in the chat i'm sorry no do not apologize i was actually trying to uh find this if we have a couple of more minutes i would like to andy help me and tell me if the instagram can be seen Yes. Okay. So as I was telling you, this is managed by the students, okay? Not by us teachers. So they are the ones working on the posts that you see here. We just give them the piece of news. We have different challenges for Foreign Language Day. They take part in our challenges, as you can see. We let them know about the mission of our school so they can understand better how they can be part of the change. And as you can see, uh, the Be Active workshops we organized uh, this summer and we saw that they uh, actually help a lot of students. And also to show you that it's possible again, to help your community, we also created this blog. Andy or Anna, please tell me if it's okay. Just yes. nod your heads. <laughs> okay, thank you. So again, we created this blog. This one is managed by teachers, but includes information created with the students. So we include information about our e-twinning projects and events about the e-safety level that uh, we apply for when the validation uh, is over. You can download a lot of information from our blog as well. We made it downloadable for, for people to use it as a source of inspiration. We also uploaded uh, the project plans that we had in uh, eTwinning. So again, people can have a clear uh, understanding of what eTwinning projects are, okay? To try to make it easier for everybody to see that it's not that difficult to join a project or to work on a project. Again, to show the support of our community, uh, we uploaded different tutorials, in, we also included them, especially now that um, the platform is, has changed. So a lot of people need to have a better understanding. So we created tutorials teaching them how to create pages, uh, how to work on their profiles, how to add students, what kind of instruments to use for different uh, tasks as Andy was telling you and again we also to let we also wanted to let them know what students do when they work together and again they are the agent, agents of change they changed a lot of things in our school they showed also the leaders from our community they showed them that students can make a big difference so they created the collection of World War Games which Adela and Andy presented in the national competition. Anastasia and Andy played on different occasions and even created some of the games here. We also have a Padlet especially for teachers with links, uh, which allow you to edit 
all the information. The presentations made by our students in the national competitions, which again can be used as examples of good practice. Again, for all the people invited here today, these are created by our students, showing people that yes, they can work on materials, they can create examples of good practice uh, when it comes to a European project. And one of the most treasured, let's say, final products are the brochures created by our students uh, in different projects with pieces of art and poetry, as well as using different sports objects to create together with the uh, physical education teacher, they created tracks. We wanted students to move more, especially after the pandemics. So they worked together in teams to make this. The tracks you see are made by uh, Andy on a tablet, for example. Uh, we had the volunteer class who also wanted to recreate everything the students uh, put on paper, let's say. Okay. And they also create videos for our YouTube channel. Again, we are just the watchers. Okay. We are supervising them. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. Adela, Anastasia, and Andy, thank you so much for being so wonderful in everything you do. Adriana, thank you for sharing from your wonderful experience from uh, what you have gained so far. And Nikki and the team, thank you so much for the opportunity. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Oh, of course, no, the pleasure is really our all ours. Uh, it was a great presentation and, and especially thank you to the girls. It was great to to see your work and I think uh, participants rather enjoyed seeing the hearing the first hand account. Uh, I believe we do have a question. Uh, Diarmuid, could you please type your question in the chat? Uh, we have a question in the meantime from Lucia. Uh, we have a couple of minutes. Uh, she said, how much time did you dedicate to these activities? Can you easily combine these activities with daily school routines? Uh, is for Nicoletta or for <laughs> us? <laughs> well, we have one, we have two minutes left. So one minute for Adriana, one minute for Nicoletta. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> Uh, at winning uh, is, um, I think, in all classes and all the, during the day. We can, we don't have um, special time for at winning. At winning is everywhere and every day, in every project, in every activity. And uh, we are thinking the, the things, we are thinking the activities through at winning. So we start from the beginning with this kind, with this idea of collaboration. So everything is everywhere. Every it winning is everywhere. Thank you. It's integrated into the into the curriculum. Yes. Nicoletta, your minute has started. We don't spend. I mean, you don't feel the time passing because we try to integrate it every day, taking each step. We use uh, WhatsApp groups indeed to facilitate communication because I don't teach all the students in it winning. I'm not their teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm just their supervisor in school. Uh, sometimes we have it winning activities in some of the classes because the management team in our school encourages us. I told you we will have an optional class, especially for it winning starting next year, but also summer workshops. Um, Adela, Andy, does it take a lot of time? Just fast answers. No, it's the tasks are really easy to do and you can do them in 10 minutes. Max. And they're, they're fun too, so it doesn't really consider it as a task. You just have to do a research and you learn. So, okay, nice. 
Great. Uh, well, thank you once again uh, to all of you guys. It was great to hear um, to hear your experience. Also, thank you to everyone who joined. We hope that you got a lot out of it and some nice direct inspiration. Uh, my colleague Marta has shared the evaluation form in the chat, but I will paste it here once again. Uh, we would love to hear from you about your experience with the webinar. Um, again, it has been recorded, so the presentation and the recording will be available um, on the European School Education platform in the upcoming days. Um, and I think that we are about done. <laughs>